So this is a METOPC satellite, which is the number three of our first generation of METOPC satellites, which is composed of three satellites. The two first ones have been launched already, and this one is the last to be launched. METOP A was launched in 2006. It was uh, assumed uh, to work for five years. METOP B at this point in time should have been launched 4.5 years later. Uh, and another 4.5 years later, METOP C should have been started, but with the duration of METOP A, and it's still working, uh, it was extended to six years, so we had a launch in 2006, 12, and now in 2018. METOP is a joint venture between ESA and UMESAT. Uh, in ESTEC, there is a team, which is an ESA UMESAT team, which is in charge of the procurement of the spacecraft, and uh, including the launch campaign, as we see now. And UMESAT itself is in charge of uh, the launcher procurement, of the ground segment procurement, and of the operation of the spacecraft. METOPC has already a long history, almost 30 years. Uh, in 1998, actually, the UMESAT Council approved the program. But the ideas for METOP uh, are much earlier, already in the mid-90s, so 1993, the initial design studies were done. And um, so from this time, they developed uh, the, uh, the concept of uh, METOP and then brought it uh, to the UMESAT Council in 1998 uh, to approve it. Actually, at that point of time, the cooperation with the US was already decided. Europe and the US said, OK, they want to share the burden of a polar system. As part of what we call the initial joint polar system, so in 1998, uh, UMESAT and NOAA signed this cooperation agreement where three uh, European satellites, so three METOP satellites, were corresponding to three uh, US satellites. And for these satellites, we share uh, instruments so that the users get information from both satellites, the same types of information. We also provide ground systems coverage. Over Svalbard, the station can view every single one of the 14 orbits per day per METOP satellite. Whereas over Fairbanks and Wallops, the stations are further south than Svalbard. And as a result, we can collect with the two coming to the two stations approximately 11 orbits per day. So we have three so-called blind orbits that we're not able to downlink on a daily basis per satellite. So we take advantage of the UMETSAT ground system to be able to downlink those three data orbits uh, and make those data available to us. Even if they have been designed in the mid-90s and built uh, you know, in, in the 90s, beginning of 2000, the instrument set is still very advanced. Uh, we have a, a set of instruments which today is uh, unprecedented so far. Um, I would like to point out in particular the YASI instrument. This is a very sophisticated instrument. YASI is it's performing the uh, uh, total atmospheric column uh, spectra measurement, okay? And uh, thanks to that product, we are able to improve the uh, forecast of, of the weather. As you can see, there are a lot of instruments on these satellites, and it's quite a challenge also to, uh, let's say, uh, make them uh, live together. We have in total 13 instruments. They do measurements of the data or parameters which are important for the scientists and for the meteorologists uh, who do weather predictions and most of all it's temperature measurement and it's humidity measurement. I would say uh, the main successes of the program are that we have such a, a long-term data set over such a long period of time that we can uh, connect this data together, link it together with the different instruments that we have achieved a very effective cooperation, institutional cooperation, but also industrial cooperation in Europe, but also with the US, which is uh, very successful uh, day by day. In these terms, we have been very successful bringing out the data to a global user community. Another success is, of course, the extension of the program. The program had a, a fixed budget, and we are able within this budget to give much longer service than initially expected. So the, the program is also extended. And another success is that we are able to bridge into the next generation of polar satellites, the EPS second generation, which is presently under development and which will come into operation in the mid-20s. And we are able to get there with the satellites we have.